Hi, my name is Monish Beswani, and my presentation today is titled Detonation Diffuse Interface Interactions, Failure, Reinitiation, and Propagation Limits. The results presented here are a collaborative effort between Case Western Reserve University as well as the Institute Prime of CNRS in France. Now, a significant amount of work has been done in the past to investigate detonations in pre-mixed reactants. Gaseous detonations exhibiting a characteristic cellular structure, which effectively describes the motion and collision of transverse waves, passing along the wave front, forming triple points. And that can be seen here in the figure on the right. This makes detonation waves highly compressible, turbulent, and reactive in nature. The detonation waves are often characterized by a characteristic cell size, lambda, with detonation waves having either regular or irregular structures. Regular detonations have very structured cells with cell widths that can be easily determined, while irregular detonations possess highly stochastic cell sizes, and that can be seen here in the figure below. Now, detonation propagation in uniform mixtures that lead to regular detonation structures have been heavily investigated, with non-uniform mixtures leading to irregular structures receiving far less attention. In reality, however, Gas mixtures are found to exist as stratified layers, but then much more likely to encounter detonation propagation through a non-uniform mixture. Now, considering the characteristic cell size lambda, detonation diffuse interface interactions can be classified by comparing lambda with the interface thickness delta. A sharp interface shown here in the figure on the left occurs when the cell width is larger than the interface thickness with the diffuse interface formed when lambda is less than or in the same order of magnitude as the interface thickness, which is shown here in the figure on the right. A sharp interface then has an infinitely small interface thickness. We're much more likely then to encounter a diffuse interface. Past experiments conducted to investigate detonation propagation in sharp and diffuse interfaces <clears throat> are listed here below. Work done in the late 90s then proposed a critical cell size gradient greater than 0.1 for detonation propagation in low activation energy non-uniform mixtures. But there's some limitations here with using the characteristic cell size lambda to characterize the behavior, such as how does the value of lambda vary in the interface itself? Now, since the mass fraction of reactant in the interface changes, and since the value of lambda increases with dilution, how does this impact detonation evolution events, such as quenching and reinitiation at industrial scales? So simulations can then possibly provide some answers to these questions. Most numerical simulations for such studies have used reactive Euler models, and some of them are listed here. They've also explored the effect of varying equivalence ratios on detonation propagation. Uh, the figure here from Kessler's study in 2012 investigates a detonation propagation in a channel of varying equivalence ratio. So it's a fuel rich mixture on the top and a fuel lean one below. As seen here, the most uniform structure is observed for the stoichiometric mixture in the middle, with quenching behavior observed for rich and lean situations. An extension of this is a study by Hahn in 2019, where the detonation propagation was observed for increasing concentration gradients. Now, a strong gradient then means that the mixture goes from rich to lean faster across the channel. It was observed then for sharper gradients shown below here. It leads to an unstable propagation mechanism approaching quenching behavior, or we refer to as a marginal behavior. There's some limitations to using Euler models though. For one, Euler models do not address turbulence. They also do not take into account diffusion mathematically and only account for diffusion numerically. Uh, work done by Radulescu and Maxwell in 2011 have also shown that results from Euler models are subject to changes in, sen in changes in resolution. And finally, Euler models lack validation to experimental results, especially at industrially relevant scales. With the limitations of the Euler model in mind then, the proposed methodology in this study is the grid within a grid approach based on the linear Edley model developed by Menon and Kirsting in 2011. The fundamental idea of the LEM model is the small scales in the model are reduced to a one-dimensional diffusion reaction problem. The one-dimensional domain also includes the influence of turbulence through this linear Edley model. The model has since then been reformulated for compressible flows, as well as validated for premixed detonations at laboratory scales. 
some preliminary work into deflagration to detonation transition has also yielded very promising results. The work presented in this study then explores the interaction of an unsteady detonation in a fuel rich ethylene mixture and a diffuse interface with nitrogen. A single step chemistry model is used with a non dimensional activation energy and heat release tuned to reproduce the correct post shock ignition delay times, while the ratio specific heat gamma was determined at the detonation one Newman state for a shock traveling at the CJ condition. The mixture and domain size selected in this study are nearly to scale with the experiments conducted by Lieberman and Shepard in 2006-2007. The initial conditions here are generated from separate DNS simulations with the fuel rich ethylene and nitrogen initially separated and allowed to develop naturally as a gravity current. Accounting for molecular weight discrepancies and buoyancy were necessary to mimic the sliding valve configuration adopted in the experimental study. Detonation Diffuse interface interactions were investigated then using this gravity field frozen at two different times of one second and 2.2 seconds. The dark regions shown here represent fuel reactor fuel oxidizer mixture, while the white regions are inert gas and or detonation products. There's a video here that shows how, how the initial conditions are developed. To demonstrate that the initial conditions are appropriate then, the propagation speed at the head of the gravity current and the spatial vertical growth of the interface throughout the domain were tracked here in the simulation. And these were found to be in very good agreement with the value reported by Lieberman in his study. Uh, so the figure here on the left shows a comparison of the head current velocity, while the figure on the right shows uh, the diffuse interface thickness comparison uh, between the experimental and numerical solutions. To further validate the numerical procedure, a detonation propagation into a uniform reactive mixture was simulated. Following a grid resolution study, the numerical suit foil shown over here on the left, generated at comparable scales, is shown here along with the experimental suit foil. Uh, the numerical average cell size of 2.35 millimeters, calculated using an autocorrelation procedure, is in very good agreement with the reported experimental value of 2 millimeters. The results here then show a qualitative comparison of the flow structure numerically predicted with that visualized experimentally. The fields shown, the figures shown here are for those of a detonation interacting with the gravity current for the 2.2 second configuration. Um, the main features of the wave complex are, are effectively captured the clearly visible detonation, detonation front or transmitted oblique shock wave and a trailing turbulent mixing zone. The numerical solutions then provide an insight into where chemical reactions are still active in the turbulent mixing zone seen here in red. This is, this is caused due to the transmitted shock processing a layer of decreasing reactivity. The prolonged combustion in turbulent mixing zone is a key feature here. This is in contrast seen in sharp interface interactions with no chemical reactions observed. Uh, a video here just shows the simulation and this is a pretty heavy simulation. Like this, this took about 41 days to run over 200, on 250 CPUs. The numerical suit foil after full detonation evolution for two cases is shown here. The suit foils are generated by tracking the vorticity magnitude maxima in the computational domain per cell at each time step. And some very interesting phenomena is immediately seen in this diffuse case with a quenching and reinitiation observed in, in the diffuse interface. Now, since the equivalence ratio and level of dilution have been shown to influence this quenching reinitiation behavior, we attempted first explaining the behavior to tracking of the, of the reactive mixture mass fraction, which is shown by these lines here. Unfortunately, the different phenomena could not be captured, could not be explained this way. So we instead attempt an explanation using the gradient cell size. To test the validity of this metric for our case, additional simulations were run for planar detonations using uniform conditions to map the expected increase in cell size as a function of initial reactant mass fraction y. The cell size measurements were once again calculated using an autocorrelation procedure 
and confirm manually. The results are fit to an exponential function based on the reported experimental dependence of cell size as a function of nitrogen dilution for ethylene oxygen mixtures. Finally, the field of cell size gradient can then be computed from the gravity current detonation simulations using this expression here below. The suit falls are then once again shown here with the gradient cell size instead. Past literature has indicated a critical value of 0 0.1 for detonation propagation uh, for, for uniform mixtures. But this, based on us, RS next study, appears as a very conservative estimate with a value of, of 0 0.5 appearing more accurate for this moderate activation energy case. Representative plots of how the critical gradient cell size is calculated are shown here for a given x value. The plots show mass fraction and vorticity magnitude maxima together with the vertical gradient of cell size and the mass fraction gradient. The vertical line here essentially marks the end of the cellular structure. This is signaled by a drop in the fluctuations in the vort vorticity magnitude maxima. And the intersection of this vertical line with the gradient curve permits us to uniquely determine the cell size gradient at which quenching occurs. The figure here then summarizes the critical gradient cell size value along the entire domain of interest. So the average critical value of 0 0.63 for the one second case and 0 0.44 for the two second case are significantly higher than the 0 0.1 value reported in the past. Next, the critical gradient is also plotted against corresponding vertical interface thickness delta, where delta was determined at each x location by measuring the vertical distance between the mass fraction changing from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 for the reactor mixture. These two quantities appear to be inversely correlated with the thicker reactive layers requiring smaller cell size gradients and vice versa. Next, the, the quenching and reinitiation behavior observed in the 2.2 second case also warrants further investigation. Uh, this figure here is a close up of partial quenching for instantaneous fields of density gradient and reaction rate overlaid over the suit form. Uh, from the figures here, you can clearly see like triple points detaching from the main detonation front and running away through the diffuse interface. As they propagate along a layer of decreasing the reactivity, the leading shock and reaction zone progressively decouple until chemical heat release is no longer capable of sustaining the front. In the absence of triple point reflections, triple point transmission then seems to be a characteristic feature of detonation propagation through diffuse layers. Next, a close-up of the reinitiation event of the detonation wave is shown here. Since the gravity currents considered here exhibit a variable layer thickness, the longer the time allowed for their development, the higher the likelihood of encountering thicker regions where transmitted triple points at different instances during the detonation interface interaction can, can essentially coalesce and generate local thermodynamic conditions conducive to, therm to detonation reinitiation. Finally, there's a need then to discuss the applicability of, of these new results. For these moderate activation energy cases, the value for critical gradient cell size is higher than, than the 0 0.1 value reported below. The old value, though, appears to be a good estimate in relatively undisturbed areas where no phenomenon like quenching and initiation occur. It then appears that cellular dynamics and irregularities in, in part play a role for a higher value in the interface which has not been explored before. Finally, it should definitely be mentioned that these values should not be taken as hard limits. Since, since the critical cell size gradient uh, is related to the interface thickness inversely. So an increase in critical cell size gradient is seen for, for uh, a diffusion interface thickness that's smaller and vice versa. In conclusion then, the study here validates the linear eddy model for large eddy simulations to capture detonations in non-uniform mixtures, as well as detonations at laboratory scales. And the quenching limit observed is influenced by the size of the diffusion layer, as well as for cellular dynamics and irregularities. Lastly, we'd like to thank the HPC resources available at Case Western Reserve University uh, for the computational power required to, to run these simulations and process the data. 
Thank you very much.